What are you so worried about right now? Hi, it's great to be with you. Uh, well, this uh, up cycle has gone on for a long time, and there's clearly uh, uh, evidence that there's uh, serious uh, trouble brewing in the economy. Uh, there's a witch's brew right now of uh, increased leverage, lots of liquidity, uh, consumers getting overborrowed. So uh, you can see the elements for a, a downturn. And importantly, as I said yesterday in the FT, uh, a number of the tools that regulators need to uh, dampen a crisis have been taken away from them. Like what? I thought the banks were in good shape from a capital position and highly regulated under Dodd-Frank. Well, when you get into a crisis, crises really come about when people get panicky and they withdraw liquidity from the market. In other words, they want their money back, they don't want to lend any more money, and that kind of freeze up can be just devastating. So what you want to do is have regulators like the Fed and the FDIC be able to calm the market in terms of the Fed uh, pumping money into fi troubled financial institutions when they have to, and the FDIC being able to guarantee uh, liabilities. Those powers were severely restrained uh, in uh, Dodd-Frank, uh, so that uh, they have uh, less in their toolkit, and some of their most powerful tools have been taken away, and that's not a good thing. Eugene, I wonder what you made of Powell's speech about uh, corporate credit, uh, corporate debt specifically, a couple of weeks ago. And sort of the framework he used was, it's not the end of the world, uh, it's not great either, it's somewhere in between. How do, we, uh, how do we work to understand where his thinking is on this? Well, I have a lot of respect for Chairman Powell, and, and he's got to act in a judicious fashion. If he says things that are too alarming, the markets get spooked. If he says things that are too tame, it has the other effect. So uh, he's been judicious and, and a good leader. Uh, uh, but what I'm seeing out there, and I think uh, many are, is an enormously uh, overheated uh, leverage loan market with terms that may be historically poor. Uh, a lot of it's outside the banking uh, system, but the banking system will be infected by it. So we're seeing the buildup, which you'd expect to see at the end of a cycle. Uh, of some dangerous trends. Can't the Fed just keep it going for a long time by lowering interest rates, getting back into QE? I mean, we're not even close to the negative rates that our friends in Europe and Japan are facing. Well, the Fed certainly has powerful ability to uh, stimulate the economy. But our interest rate environment is historically low, and there's only so far you can drop before you have to get into negative territory. And perhaps more importantly, the world is awash with liquidity, and for the Fed to lower rates and take other measures that add liquidity into the system right now has the huge danger of increasing uh, the, the speed and size of any bubbles that are created. And as you know, financial bubbles are, are can burst, and it's a very unpleasant situation like we had in 2007, 2008. So is that, are you arguing that uh, they would be accentuating uh, sort of animal spirits at an inopportune time, or are they pushing on a string given all the ample liquidity? It's, it's very, very tough stuff, and that's why it's important for us to have, and we do have a, a highly competent Federal Reserve Board. Uh, you've got to have all the data available to you, and you make a tough judgment. Uh, if you tighten up too much, you can send the economy down. If you loosen up too much, you're, you're just making the conditions relevant for the next crisis. Uh, uh, and it's a, it's a very tough set of judgments, but uh, yeah, they could get us in real trouble if they act too precipitously. And so far, they've been very judicious. All right, warning noted. Separately, wanted to ask you about Wells Fargo, because plenty of reports lately indicate that this is a bank that's having trouble finding a new CEO. It's now under the supervision of the Federal Reserve and the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, which makes it even harder. Eugene, do you think, uh, how difficult is it for this company well, to find a leader? Well, Sarah, you're probably, I, I, let, me, let me be a little elliptical in the answer. I don't talk about individual uh, 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 financial companies because we do so many things in terms of building their compliance systems and risk management systems with basically the entire industry. But I can say this, that one of the most interesting aspects of the Wells Fargo situation is the degree to which social media globally is exacerbating and making more volatile individual 
uh, 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 conduct events. The conduct events which are complained of in Wells Fargo are real, uh, but the uh, swirl around that is bigger and mo more notorious because of modern technologies, you know, and importantly, social media. To fight those technologies, in addition to the traditional tools of culture and tone from the top, what we need are advanced technologies in these institutions that are able to identify problems early and act on them with vigor. So, you know, Wells, in a lot of ways, is emblematic of a worldwide phenomenon that is of considerable importance to consumers and everybody else.